Hi, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop, and today I'm bringing you inside some place the general public normally doesn't go. You're inside the assembly room here, which is normally off limits to most people. Uh, this is our assembly room, which you know, get to see part of it, not much of it. We don't show it to everyone. Uh, we're, we've got a subject here today that I get asked at my counter. People call me about it all the time. It's adjusting hydraulic lifters, and there's a lot of uh, bad information out there. There's a lot of uh, uh, old school type techniques that really aren't applicable to the way the job ought to be done. I'm going to show you a foolproof way of adjusting your hydraulic lifters to where they're perfect every time and it doesn't matter whether it's a Ford Chevy or a Chrysler it's, it's all the same one to another. Uh, but first of all I just want to show you this is the project we're getting ready to, to put together. Uh, show it to you without the cylinder heads on it. We're going to bolt the heads on in just a minute. This is, this is, to me, this is cool. This is old school stuff. I grew up on this. Old small journal 327 Chevy with a set of double hump heads. It doesn't get any more original than that. To me, that's really neat. For some of the younger guys, that's not interesting. But for you older guys, you know, what's not to like? It's pretty neat. So anyhow, we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the cylinder heads bolted on this. Get all the valve train components ready to go. And, uh, and then we'll be back in just a minute. And we're going to show you exactly how to adjust the valves perfect first time every time no mistakes Okay, we're back. We got this 327 Chevy, small journal, small block, steel crank, uh, rod bolts balanced. It's got uh, board 30 over, flat top pistons, small comp cams, camshaft, and a pair of double hump heads installed. Old school rebuild, nothing fancy. For you older guys, you probably probably really like this. For some of you younger guys, it's, it's really not quite as interesting because it's not real high tech. But it is real basic, and that's why I picked it to do this particular project. What we're going to show you here, I'm going to demonstrate to you the best way there is, bar none, on how to adjust hydraulic valves. What I'm going to show you is going to, show, is going to save you a lot of time, and it is a foolproof way of adjusting valves. I've been in business since I was 17 years old rebuilding engines. And as I go to adjust a set of valves and using the methods that was taught back then, I wound up having problems with them. I'm going to, I'm going to take... Uh, Explain some some details on old wise tales on how to do these things and some old methods on how to do these things that I, I want you to completely and totally forget and I'm going to make your life easier. Old engines. I got books. A lot of you guys might have learned this from your fathers or your grandfathers or, or old things that you've read. will tell you to take a, a hydraulic lifter and take a hydraulic lifter and to soak it in oil. And a lot of guys would soak these things overnight. And they soak them in oil and then they take a push rod and they put it into the, pl the plunger. And the plunger is spring loaded. And you pump it up and down until all the air pressure comes out of it. But a lifter is a hydraulic check valve, basically. And what happens is, is when that oil comes in there and you push all that air out, that plunger is no longer spring loaded. It pumps up and it gets hard because the oil doesn't compress. And then it's, it com comes hard and it's like a solid piece of metal. When, when you pumped up your lifters and you put them down inside the engine, and then you go to adjust the rock arm, instead of you getting the depression of the push rod pushing down the little spring and the plunger inside the lifter, which is what you're shooting for, around 30, 35 thousandths worth of depression. Instead of you getting the lifter depressed, what you wind up happening is because the lifter is hard, the rock arm will push down on the valve instead. So once you adjust, once you adjusted your rock arm, your valve is hanging open a little bit. What happens is, is when you start it up, that rock arm's hanging open a little bit, and this thing doesn't want to start. Or when it starts up, it's shaking and shimmying and it's running hard. We're going to do away with that. Any of you guys who has ever tried to adjust valves, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, anything that has push rod driven with a set of with adjustable rock arms on it, if you've ever tried to do that with the engine running, you got the valve cover off, it's running, it's blowing oil out the top of it, it's dripping on your headers, it's getting all over your nice car, your fender wells. 
and you loosen the rocker arm up till it gets to zero latch and the rocker arm starts tapping. Then you adjust it down just till it stops. Then you go a quarter of a turn. The valve hangs open and the engine starts shaking. It's missing. Sometimes it'll even stall out. And you'll sit there and let it run and run and run until until it smooths out. And then you go a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. Usually, you know, you, you'll adjust them somewhere between a, a half a turn past zero latch to maybe a full turn past zero latch. That's a hard way to go through and adjust valves. And like I said, you make a mess doing so. can even cause a fire. Uh, things are hot. It's easy to get burned. There's another method. And, and that's also, uh, you, you can read about it on the CompCam's website, where you actually take a valve, an exhaust valve. When the exhaust valve just starts to open, you can adjust the intake valve. And then you can rotate the motor around until the intake valve goes all the way down and comes halfway back up. Then the exhaust valve is ready to adjust. That's a lot to keep track of, too, because as you're sitting here looking at the motor, it's easy to confuse which one you're looking at. The other method that... Uh, has been used for years is taking the engine and getting it on compression stroke, getting your two valves up, uh, get your valves on what they call the rock, where, where both valves are completely closed. You adjust the valves on number one cylinder, and then you go in firing order. And then you'll take you'll take a wrench on the front of the motor, and you got to have a, a harmonic balancer on there that's marked in 90 degree increments, and it has to have a, a pointer set up that's set to true top dead center, which is important. We'll talk about that at a later date. You, you'll, you'll adjust number one cylinder, then you rotate it 90 degrees. Then you can do the next cylinder in sequence. On, on a Chevrolet, you'd go 1A436572, or you'd use a Ford pattern, depending upon what motor you're working on. And every time you adjust one valve, one, one cylinder, you adjust number one, you rotate the motor 90 degrees, then you do number eight. Then you rotate it 90 degrees, and you go from 1A4, just number four, three, six, five, seven, two, advance in 90 degrees at a time. And you have to take the engine and rotate it around 360 degrees 90 at a time two full revolutions to get to all the cylinders to get to all eight cylinders and at the same time you have to pay attention to which ones you're adjusting and if you're like me because I, I I was in a business since I was 17 years old and I was a one-man band for a long time I'd have to stop answer a telephone I have customers come in people stop in to see me I'm all the time getting interrupted and then I come back I can't remember what cylinder I was on. And I got disgusted and I had to figure something out different. So this is what I'm going to show you. This is the easiest way. It's a foolproof method. You, you, will, you will save so much time and effort. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, if you just do what I tell you, it'll be perfect every time. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain here. When you adjust the valve, the purpose of adjusting the valve is to get the lifter as far down in the bore as it can go so that so that the rocker arm comes up and the valve is fully closed. That is when the valve is ready to be adjusted. That's when you're, you're checking either if it was a solid lifter cam, that's when you'd be putting a feeler gauge through there and checking for clearance. Or on a hydraulic case, that's when we're going to adjust it down and get the valve, uh, uh, get the push rod pushed in into the lifter and set in the preload. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, we're going to rotate the motor. I got, I've already got all the lifters in. None of the lifters were put in oil. That's very important. They're all dry. They're all spongy. You can push on the lifter plunger. They push up and down. Every one of these, I can push them up and down. All, as you can see that, they're all spring-loaded. That's the depression that we're going to adjust. That we're going to adjust. I have all the push rods, rock arms in place. Everything's clean. Everything's close to adjusted. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through, and we don't even have to keep track of whether it's on the intake stroke or the exhaust stroke or where the piston's at or anything like that. we got all 16 in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to feel a push rod. Now, if you can see, some of these lifters are down and some of them are up. They're all in various stages. Now, what we're shooting for is to get all the clearance between the lifter, the push rod, and the rock arm adjusted out of it when the valve is all the way down. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go through like this and we're going to adjust each and every one of these and I'm going to rotate this push rod with my hand and there it is. I tighten down just to where I can feel it makes contact. That is at zero lash. There, I've taken all the clearance out of it and I'm going to do the very next one and I'm going to do every single one of them just like this. Just to where you can feel it starts to drag and at that point you know the clearance is gone.
Nothing complicated about this. Now, if, if the phone rings or somebody comes to my counter and I got to get up and walk away, uh, I don't have to, I don't have to figure out where I was. All I have to do is come back in and start feeling them. Okay, that's tight, it's tight, it's tight, it's tight. And I can start, I can start right over again. I can start right where I left off. And I haven't, uh, I haven't, the, the interruption did not cause me to start from, from square one. If you, if you ever had to do this for a living and you had to do, and, and you've had as many interruptions while you're trying to build a motor as I've had in the past, you'd understand what a valuable lesson I'm teaching right now. contact. Push rod spins. Contact. Okay. Now, now here's here's the here's the the kicker. If if a lot of you guys know now that what's going to happen when I rotate this motor I'm going to rotate this motor 90 degrees, and when I rotate it 90 degrees, some of these lifters are going to drop down in the lifter bore, and when that, this one drops down, this is going to get it's going to get loose. Now other ones are on the side of the camshaft that's starting to come up, so that when you adjust the rocker arm, those are, the, are going to push the push rod farther up into the uh, I'm push the push rod farther up to the rock arm. And then it's going to get tight. And then we're going to go through and we're going to readjust the push rods only that come loose. The ones that are already, the ones that are, that are being pushed up, we don't, we don't have to adjust on them anymore. Okay, one more. Okay. Now I'm going to take my wrench I got up here on the front of the crankshaft and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you know what? It doesn't have to be exactly 90. Little this, little that. It ain't going to make much of a difference because I'm going to go around a couple of times and every time one of these push rods come loose, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. And that's all I have to do. And I put my fingers up here. That one is still snug. This one, this one did not come loose whatsoever. Ooh, that one came loose because that, that, that lifter was up and now it's going down. So now we have all this clearance. It's got to come out of there. And what I'm effectively doing is I'm only adjusting them down to zero lash. That means that means that the clearance is taken out of it. I'm not actually, when I get done adjusting these out after I've turned this motor around uh, a couple of revolutions and I keep looking for the push rods that come loose, they're the only ones that's going to get adjusted. When they get adjusted down, they'll be adjusted down to zero lash and the push rod will not actually, when the valve is closed, the push rod will not actually be depressing the plunger in the lifter. Now what I mean by that is when the push rod, when the put when the when the lifter's all the way down, the the push rod's all the way down, the rocker arm is up, the valve is completely closed. And that is where, see see I didn't have to adjust none of these. That's where oh, there we go, that one came way loose. That's what zero lash is. Zero lash is when your uh, lifter is on the low lobe of the cam, some people call it. Some people, some of you old school guys will call it the heel of the cam. That means it's on the bottom portion of the cam that, that makes the valve closed. There we go, that one came real loose. I hope this makes sense. But even if it doesn't make sense to you, if you don't, if you don't completely comprehend it, Trust me, if you just follow the directions, and this is really simple to do, when you start it up, it'll run perfect. Okay. All right. I'll rotate it again. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm not sitting here having to keep track of what stroke it's on, which valve, whether it's intake or exhaust. I'm just going through them. And I can do it pretty quick. Doesn't matter if I have to stop and answer the phone or... See, all of them. They're all good. They may not be in a minute. Some of them, some of them are, some of them are going to be finished in a sec, and some of them are going to keep getting loose. But I'm going to take take at least two full revolutions of this motor 
I've already went a half of revolution. I did two 90s. And to do two full revolutions, you got to do eight 90s, right? Four, four, 360 degrees, 90 at a time. Is one revolution, four, four times 90. Nothing on that one. We're getting close. A lot of them. But we're still going to go two full revolutions because we got to be thorough. Yeah. See, back, back when I got in this business, vans, customized customers' vans was a big thing. And they had shag carpet and all in them, and captain's chairs, and that was a big deal back in the back in the late '70s and early mid '80s. And you had to uh, you had to have your rock arms right because if you put something together and it tapped, and you had to pull the, the the engine hatch off and try to adjust it with it running, and you got oil squirting all over the place, you'd ruin a guy's vehicle. So I I, I came up with this back when I probably was maybe 19 or 20 years old. Go another 90. And I've been doing it ever since. So show, showing you on the Chevrolet. Works the same on a big block or a small block. Six cylinders, four cylinders, anything but hydraulic adjustable valves. It doesn't matter whether or not it's a roller camshaft. It's all one and the same. Okay, we finished getting all the rock arms adjusted just to the point that we're at zero lash. I Off camera, I finished the full rotation of taking the motor around uh, more than two full times, double checking it. You only have to go around two, but I'm a little bit anal. So I, I go completely around and adjusted every one down to it just made contact. Now remember, there's no oil inside any of the lifters. We're going to address that in just a moment. So now every single one of them is adjusted down. They're at zero lash only. So now Depend upon what cam you're running, your own personal preference, the type of lifter that you have, you're going to decide how much lash, how much preload you're going to put on this. I am going to use three quarters of a turn adjustment on each one of these uh, on each one of these rock arms. I wanted if if I was adjusting with this running while it was running, I'd loosen each one up to a clax, I'd take it back down just till it stopped, and then I'd go a quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn for a total of three quarters of a turn at a time. And every time I do that, it would open up the valve, make the engine run rough, cough and spit, pop through the carburetor under some circumstances, stall out, and, and leak oil all over the place. Okay? So now, what I've done with it off, I can't stress this enough. The, the lifters are spongy. There's no oil in them. The, the rocker arm is not going to open. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. As I'm facing it, this is 12 o'clock. There's a quarter, there's a quarter, there's a quarter. I'll take it around a nine. And I don't have to pay attention to intake or exhaust stroke on any single one. It doesn't matter whether the, the whether the valve is up or the valve is down. It's all one and the same. If you don't understand that, it's okay. Just trust me. This is a foolproof way of doing this. And when you start it up, she'll run perfect, quiet, and smooth. And all your friends will be impressed. And the ones that are sitting here and telling you don't do it like this, I bet they ain't been building engines for 37 years, six days a week like I have. All right. That was a little stiff. Now, remember what I just said, where all the rock arms were adjusted? They were all adjusted at zero lash. Now, every single one of them is adjusted at zero lash plus three quarters of a turn, and that three quarters of a turn pushes the uh, plunger of the lifter down approximately 30 to 35 thousandths, which is exactly what I want. I'm not going to do this in front of you because it's simple. Rock arms are done, they're adjusted. The next thing I do right now is I'm going to take five quarts of oil. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm also going to use uh, a, a zinc, a ZDDP, zinc and phosphorus oil additive, because this is a flat tap to camshaft. 
you have to either with a flat tappet cam, you either have to go back with uh, what they call like a hot rod oil that's made for earlier model cars, or you have to run an oil additive in them because the zinc and phosphorus has been taken out of the new oil. With my intake manifold off, I'm going to just dump it all over my cam and lifters, and it's going to get a real good bath as it enters its way down into the, into the oil pan. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an oil pressure gauge in here, and I'm going to put a speed wrench into, into the uh, oil pump shaft uh, with my oil pump tool, and I'm just going to rotate it by hand, and we're going to just pump the oil up until every rocker arm bleeds. The oil is going to go through the oil pump, through the motor, through the bearings, up through the cam, through the oil galleys and the lifters, and it's going to come up, and it's going to come right out the push rod hole. And as it comes out the push rod hole, that you'll, you'll do that until the air comes out of the lifters. That's the same, except better, than taking a lifter and putting it in a can of oil with a push rod and pumping it up. Uh, you adjust them up with it dry, lubricate the outside of your lifter, adjust every one until it's zero lash, which means the, the lifter itself is either on the what you call the base circle or the heel of the cam, the low load of the cam, that's all the same terminology. Lifters all the way down, you adjust it till you get all the, all the lash out of it, adjust them all three quarters of a turn, dump your oil in it, prime it up, and once you prime it up and, and all of your lifters are bleeding, you got all the air out of it. Now those lifters are adjusted absolutely perfect, and with all the oil going through them, they will not start up, they will not tap one time. Then all you have to do is get your distributor in right, hit this thing with a little bit of fuel, and I promise you, your motor, your motor won't crank three times, and it'll be it'll start off and running. I do it every single time. I always bet my guys before before we start it up. I always ask if anybody wants to bet me fifty bucks whether or not the engine will start up on the second or third crank, and nobody ever takes it because they know I'd win. I hope this has been a help to you. Uh, this has been a big savings in my shop when I taught myself to do this many years ago. I've never read it in a book. I've never seen it on a video. It may be out there. I'm, I'm not the only person around who probably thought this way, but I've never found it from anybody. This was my own, my own thought. And uh, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop. I'm your engine guy.